This is Matthias Hermansen, whose platform GamerPay was nearly wiped out by a sudden API shutdown. But thanks to a dramatic pivot and fast acting, he was able to save the platform. If you don't know what to look for or how to react properly, situations like this could strike you unexpectedly anytime and be the end of your startup. So today I got him on a call to see how Matthias and his team reacted in this critical situation. While we learned the five key concepts to prepare you better for situations like this one. We are a marketplace for gaming skins. And uh, for, for those of you unfamiliar with that, it's basically digital outfits that you wear in games, uh, in particular in Counter-Strike. It's extremely popular. And we are the middleman and marketplace for connecting buyers and sellers worldwide for, for trading of Counter-Strike skins. GamerPay operates as a digital marketplace for Counter-Strike skins, bridging the trust gap in a community plagued by scams. They serve as a trusted intermediary, ensuring secure transactions. About half of every Counter-Strike player you will talk to, they'll report to you and tell you they've been scammed. And what happens and why do they get scammed? Well, you know, someone on the other end of the world will tell you they're going to send you the money or they're going to send you the item in just a second. You just need to do one little action extra and then you don't get anything in the other uh, in, in return. The birth of GamerPay stemmed from the frequent scams in third party trading markets. By tackling this issue head on, Matthias and his team created a solution to protect players and establish trust. So the big connection we have is with the game. So the game uh, has created and owns the skins, you could say, uh, and they basically in the end control what we are allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. So we have a massive platform risk, but the big one for us is Steam and Valve. GamerPay's dependency on Steam and Valve present a significant platform risk, making their entire business vulnerable to decisions made by these entities. It's pretty imprinted in my mind, uh, 3rd of April. I wake up in the morning uh, and I realize that we've been cut out of Steam. So they cut the API access we had, and the API access is essentially how we validate the trades. And, you know, in a split second, we didn't know where's the money, you know, where's the items, where's, you know, how are things going. The abrupt loss of API access was a critical blow, instantly disrupting their ability to validate trades and maintain trust with users. For us, that's the heart and nerve of everything we do. It's, you know, the number one for us is, is making sure that money and items move with each other so that we can always guarantee uh, that you either get the item you bought or you get the money back. So it's essential. It's the core uh, nerve of what we're doing. Ensuring seamless transactions is the core of GamerPay's operations. Losing the capability was like a sudden heart attack for the business. You could say technically they just, you know, decommissioned the API. So the API stopped working. You call it. It doesn't return anything. If you go one level further, uh, a week before, uh, there had been an incident in the community where some gambling uh, companies, like let's say bad actors, had played around, had showed muscle, had showed that you can gamble with different Counter-Strike items. I think Val got fed up with that and they turned off the APIs and we were collateral in that turnoff. Caught in the crossfire of Valve's crackdown on bad actors, GamerPay found themselves as collateral damage, highlighting the vulnerability of relying on external platforms. You know, full shutdown, we went to a plan B, you know, redirecting to other kind of APIs. Unfortunately, the bad actors went to the same APIs and then they shut those down. We just decided, hey, let's not use these APIs. Let's go to a more manual solution where we are, let's say, more disconnected, uh, which is what we're running on now. Um, so about a week or so, we were in the dark, uh, you could say. Forced into a relentless game of cat and mouse, Matthias and his team pivoted to a more manual solution to regain control and continue operations. So seeing that was kind of insane. Obviously, I think entrepreneurs have a, a, a mindset that you can fix anything and you can just, you know, we'll get back on top right away, you know. So it's like a, it's a grenade that... that pops, right? But then you're like back into the mode of, okay, so how do we deal with this? Okay, so let's do one, let's do two, let's do three. And I think, you know, you have that naive mindset that you can just fix it like that. The entrepreneurial spirit of resilience and quick thinking was crucial as Matthias and his team tackled the crisis head on, developing solutions on the fly. We had talked about that this could happen and we had talked about what we would do if it happened uh, and that we already had this, you know, let's say mental backup plan of what we would do. So that's sort of the technical side of it. You could say, um, we're super close to our community. So, you know, day one, we're communicating to everyone on Twitter saying, hey, this is what's happening. Your money is safe. You know, don't worry. We're fixing this. And you get a lot of love back, which gives you some energy to just, you know, go back and uh, go back and fight uh, a little bit. Transparent communication with the community was a lifeline, keeping users informed and maintaining their trust during the crisis. We have so much more platform risk just, you know, when you start thinking about it, right? We have 
AWS. We have all our servers running maybe one place. I guess that's the counter thing I tell myself is that we actually accept a lot of platform risk all over the place, uh, honestly. But uh, some of it is just more pronounced uh, like this one for us. Reflecting on the broader picture, Matthias acknowledges that platform risk is everywhere, but some dependency are more critical than others. I think actually to the transparency we had early on, that's the, that's the part to take away. We've been extremely transparent. We try to really communicate in a non-gamer language, which hopefully strikes the balance. Maybe I think some of the young gamers will think it's a bit boring because it doesn't, you know, have all of the right emojis. But um, but it sort of at least tells to the point what's going on, right? There's nothing hidden here. Clear and honest communication, even if it's less flashy, is crucial in maintaining trust and understanding within the community. Right now, you could say, I think business, you obviously take a hit, right? Like that that's just unavoidable when you're closed for eight days. Uh, but the cool thing is to see you know, our core community is back. They're rooting for us. You could say on the revenue side, things have picked up again. It does give you a bit of a, let's say, a slap in the face, but then that, you know, then you're back. Despite the inevitable hit from the shutdown, the strong support from the community helped GamerPay bounce back, regaining momentum and confidence. So we have around 400,000 uh, gamers on our platform. I guess, you know, 50 or 60,000 of them directly connected on Twitter as well. So you get a lot of, let's say, feedback quite quickly uh, on that. And honestly speaking, everyone is very supportive on the numbers. We didn't really see people uh, start to doubt what we're doing. So that's it was like a strong testament, I, I feel. The resilience and loyalty of GamerPay's user base provide a solid foundation for the recovery and future growth. First off, the platform risk is massively decreased. We are not uh, as integrated as we were before. Like we have a very, let's say, scalable solution now that actually you could say whether we call the gaming platform right now or we call a, let's say, a shipping API or we call something else, like some kind of party to verify trades. Our platform is very agnostic right now. So that's the good part of it. By developing a more scalable and agnostic solution, Solution, GamerPay has significantly reduced their platform risk, ensuring greater resilience against future disruptions. Matthias Havenson's journey is a powerful example of resilience and adaptability in the face of unexpected challenges. By staying transparent, engaging in the community, and pivoting quickly, GamerPay not only survived, but thrived. Matthias' story highlights the importance of having contingency plans, maintaining open communication, and being ready to innovate under pressure. Entrepreneurs can learn from his experience that no matter how dire the situation is, there's always opportunity to turn things around. Now stop watching, go build something.